All right, what is going on? So I realize that just I don't think only doing the NCCR Connect is enough to prepare you guys only. And so basically I'll give you guys um, new assignments. So you'll have get into NCCR Connect. You're going to do the assignments built in. And then also I will give you some other videos um, to add on, maybe another Google form or something to review, like a study guide. Um, because I want to make sure you guys are prepared for the test. And so we're in basic rigging. Rigging basically means anything that is getting picked up. So this is a crane in a factory. So if you're using some kind of machine to pick something up, the straps and everything's from the hook down is your rigging, right? Um, and so this is to do with all the stuff with cranes. If you're working with cranes, always keep your head on a swivel. Always be paying attention because um, you're lifting things that are thousands of pounds, multiple tons, hundreds of tons, right? Um, and so these cranes, if you're not paying attention to something hit you or crush you, you would, I mean, you're, you're dead. Um, there's, no, there's no just simple accident. You're out. Um, so you want to make sure you're always paying attention, follow all the safety rules, all the regulations. And something, I don't know if it touches in this book, this is more about the rigging itself, the pieces and parts. But if you're ever working around a crane, always make sure you're never in a pinch point. So say you're between two pieces, like you're picking up one piece of steel, and you don't want to stand next to the pile if you're stuck because say that when he picks it up, if it shifts over, you don't want to slam you into a wall and pinch you there. So always make sure you avoid any pinch spots if you're working around the crane. Because you're going to have to get in, get in tight, and to hook everything up, and then make sure you walk away. So we're going to get into this PowerPoint. I'm going to make sure I highlight the things on the test that you need to know. We'll go from there. So we are looking at Synthetic sling advantage. All right, so if you're looking at slings, get to the right page. If you're looking at slings, a synthetic sling is useful because it is very flexible, right? And so it's flexible, it's not gonna rust, it's not gonna corrode that way, and they're lightweight, they're just easier to handle, right? And so it's just, and they won't do as much damage, right? It's a soft material, so it won't uh, dent other pieces that you're picking up. So they're common and they're popular. Um, so there's a bunch of different kinds of different slings. Um, and so, um, as you see here, they're saying um, they put in these things to make sure, these pads, so you don't damage the sling or damage your stuff. Um, these slings, they have warning yarns. And so this is to show you guys if your... Um, if it's damaged or not. If you can start to see these, it means it's frayed too much. And there's a bunch of different ones, but especially these red yarns, they tell you, you can't use this anymore. And if ever a sling, if you see any of these things, if anything's ever damaged, you want to get rid of it right away. Don't try to fix it. Just get rid of it. Because again, you're picking up things that are weigh not 100 pounds. These are tons, right? You do want to make sure that never snaps under load. Because you imagine if a crane has something up 200 feet in the air, and all of a sudden, uh, big air handler unit crashes, it tears. Um, it's going to do a lot of damage on its way back down. So if you ever see these things, make sure you chuck it and get rid of it. So when you're choosing which type you want to use, it's based on what you're doing. So this uh, makes it easy to hook onto it. Um, there's, there's no seam here. You have eyes on it, and so that's you can hook the eye. You can make a choker with it. And then round, just again, basically it's the same thing as this, a little bit smaller. Um, and so it depends on what you're picking up and what you want to do. Um, let's see. So standard twisted, again, just a little bit different varieties. A twin path. All right. And so this is, there's two yards, there's two parallel lines, basically, of rope in between. And so... Uh, what makes these unique is this, that they have those twin things, and then also they have tattletale yarns to determine whether the sling has become too overloaded or stretched beyond. And so, I don't know if there's a picture of that. So right here. So this is with on the back side of it, so you can see, right? And it's going to show these yards, if this stretches too much, there's going to be able to, you'll see a red, right? And that means it's stretched beyond capacity you need to chuck it. Right, it's too much weight, and so they're called tattletales, and it's with these um, twin path, twin path versions. All right, All right here is optic inspection fiber. Same thing. Um, this one you show light on it, and if it's overstretched, 
um, it'll say, it'll let you know. So when you're working with a lot of hot things, um, especially, so think about a baker steel where they're doing molten metal or something, uh, the problem with those synthetic slings is rope, it'll burn, it'll melt, and so you need to use chains. Um, and chains are just common anyways for one of the most generic ones for picking up heavy things because they're really strong, really tough, really durable, can't really do anything to mess them up. And so most alloy chains, it can withstand a temperature of up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit um, without losing any rating capacity, right? That's a lot of heat, um, and so the chains can do it. And so this is showing you different ways to hitch it all together. Oh. This is called a single basket, so just one loop where you just put your stuff underneath. Um, it has a permanent hitch, or you can do a double basket, so it's just two points where it's picking it up. We keep continuing on. A bridle means it's more than um, like more than one chain coming off of one thing. So a bridle is this, and so you can have three legs, you can have four legs. So it has more than one leg coming off of one thing. So that's the bridle sling. And so it's not, what makes this a bridle and not um, like the last one is because it's a separate chain with a separate hook. If this was looped back up, then it wouldn't be, it would be a basket because it's a continuous loop. But this makes it a bridle because it's from one point to the end of a new chain. And that's the big difference. Wire rope, when I worked with cranes, um, this was what we used. This was the main thing. Um, they're pretty easy to use. What makes them easy is they're narrow and you can feed them through and around pieces of steel. I was, um, when I was working on big steel buildings, like building a gymnasium, um, we would use these because you can slide it into um, the different pieces of steel, whereas the nylon ones, they aren't stiff enough to really force, you can't get them in and around the pieces. So when using any kind of sling, you always want to look for the name tag. There always should be something saying how much weight it can hold, and all these things, and you can't use, it's illegal to use this if this tag is gone. And so it's, this is just a little plastic tag that's on the end of this wire rope. So you wanna make sure that doesn't get torn off. And so how you do that, you always make sure this is the end that gets attached to your crane, all right? So this is the end that hooks onto the crane hook. This is the end that gets looped around your material and used as a choker. Don't use the other way because your material as it shifts around could easily tear off that tag. So if you always make sure, hook this one on the crane, you don't have to worry about it. And so again, these can just withstand high temperatures, um, unlike and chemicals and things, but the problem is if you don't take good care of them, they can get rusty and those kind of things or start to fray, right? And so you wanna make sure you're checking them. The person who checks them is called a competent person. A competent person is just someone who has been trained and is able to spot what the problem is. So wire ropes are made up of different things. Right? It's basically a bunch of ropes together, and so the inside there's a core, a steel core, and then you have your center wire, as you can see, and then your strand wire gets wrapped around that, and that creates one of the parts of the rope, the lay of the rope, as it says, and then that gets twisted around your core, and the whole thing together is your rope. And so what makes it so strong is all these little things put together. And you can think of it as a piece of paper. If you just rip one piece of paper, it's really easy. If you take a phone book and try to rip a whole phone book, uh, it's nearly impossible, right? And so same thing, if this were just one little metal thing, it would be easy to snap. But since there's so many of them, the inner twisted and all these things, it makes it really strong. And so that's what makes up your wire component. And there's a bunch of different kind of patterns you can get um, with it. Um, so just use the right thing um, for the job needed. At this point starting out, you won't have to make that decision. Someone is gonna tell you what to use, but just know that's basically what a wire rope is made out of. All right, so now, if you're looking at these things are, would you would reject them uh, if you saw any of these problems. Some of them obviously look really bad, but then like this one, a minor abrasion. Again, you don't want to use it. It's, it's a weak point, basically a weak, a, the, what is that? A chain's only as strong as its weakest link, right? And so it's just, this is a weak spot. And so this is likely to tear. And so you want to get rid of these things. Um, and again, you just chuck it. You don't try to replace them, you just chuck them. And so if it's cut, severe abrasion, um, or let's see what else we can see. Just the outer jacket being cut. Um, and here you can see in this one, you see those red yarns um, sticking through. That means you snapped it to the point where you can see the red. So just different things. If you're seeing this stuff, 
you just want to chuck it. So if it doesn't look nice and new, don't use it. And then here's some more. Um, so sometimes you might catch a nail or something or using a sharp thing. Heat can damage these things. Chemicals can damage them. This is tensile, meaning it was too much. It was pulled too hard, and it was just starting to snap. And so, again, just look for things. If it doesn't look right, don't use it. Because what you're picking up, you don't want that to come crashing when it's 100 feet in the air. Chain damage, similar stuff you're looking for. Is it cracked? Is it overloaded? Meaning, it, is it stretched? Or um, excessive wear, they just aren't lining up right anymore. Rust and corrosion, chips and gouges, different things. Again, chains last a long time, but even then, they can get, um, probably a big one is overload. You want to make sure that nothing's been stretched or here dented. If, say, you dropped it on a huge piece of steel or a huge thing that's a couple tons and it cranks that, you don't want to use that chain. Wire rope damage, if they're fraying, if they're coming apart, a kink is a really bad thing, and that's easy to make happen. This was the easiest one. So when you're doing it, you want to make sure you get rid of all the twists and the loops because think of it as a hose. There's a kink in the hose that folds it really tight. That's what cuts off your water. And so if you have a loop when you're doing these to pick things up, as that rope tightens, what's going to happen is it's going to kink it, and that's basically you can't use this anymore. And the guy running the crane is going to really yell at you because he just ruined his wire rope. So make sure you get rid of the loops. It's all free, just a straight line. Um, when you hook it onto the crane, same, just different things, crushing, it was squished. Um, again, these things happen, accidents um, from that, just pay attention to that. And then we're going to look at, so this is a kink, this is birdcage, this is just overstretched. Again, you can see this has been cut. Here's another one, it's exposing those warning lines. And... We see it burnt there, so you see that. And so our next session, we're gonna be looking at the different hardware, the hitches, the, and those kind of things. But this was slings. And so just for test op, test reasons, I wanna make sure I cover um, a couple more things. First off, you wanna make sure you pay attention to what is, remember how I said you need those tags? Those tags are gonna tell you the rated capacity, the weight load. And so if you see the WLL symbol, that stands for working load limit. And so your working load limit is um, what you can use, your rated capacity. Never exceed that working load limit, right? That's how much it can pick up, the maximum weight. And so in general, if you watch the other video, you don't want to be picking up your maximum weight. You want less than that. Um, and so you don't want to use that. And then when it comes to these wire rope slings, again, that competent person, have them to check it before you use it. Before, as you're setting up the crane, someone should be checking all the slings before you get rolling to make sure you have what you need. And then so, and if it's simply, like I said, if it's missing that tag, you've got to get rid of it. Um, it can be tagged by a qualified person if that's the only thing wrong with it. If it had that tag missing, you can get an official inspector to come and do it. But it's not just like you can go and slap a piece of tape on and say it's been inspected. You need a qualified person at that point. And so you got that. Let's see. So that's all I got for these slings. So review the stuff in your NCCR Connect. And that's the PowerPoint. And that's me looking over the test questions from the book and letting you guys know. And stay tuned. I'll make a separate one for the rigging hardware hoist and hitches.